So this is the only vector app that I know of that has image tracing on the iPad. So if I convert it to vectors, look at that. Hey, that looks pretty good. Hello, it's me, Brad. Today I'm talking about the free app Vectornator, who is also the sponsor of today's video. A few months back, I talked about Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. And after that video, the folks at Vectornator reached out to me and said, hey, you know, we have a lot of features in our iPad Vector app that Adobe Illustrator doesn't have. And we have a Mac version of that app and it's free and we're gonna be launching a version 4.0. So that's what we're doing. And for a limited time, they're giving away a free MacBook. So make sure you check out the link down below in the description to get all the details on that. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be demoing the app and then I'm gonna be going over some of the new features that they've packed into version 4.0. Cool? All right, let's go. So we're gonna start with the iPad app. And this is the gallery you see when you boot up the app. You can create a new document over here. You can open a document that already exists. And this is a vector drawing and design tool. So this is built not just for illustrators, but for designers as well. I'm gonna be touching on a couple of those features as we roll through. If you've used a vector drawing app before, a lot of this is gonna look familiar where we have our tools along here on the left. So we have our arrow tool that lets us select things. We have our selection tool, which lets me grab particular nodes and move things around. That's kind of what makes Vector's unique is it's much easier to edit artwork once it's laid down. We got a cutting tool, we got the pen tool. Everybody knows the pen tool where you could just go in here and lay down your curves and, and your points and things like that. Uh, it has a lot of the things you'd expect in a modern iPad drawing app. For example, you just saw me using two fingers to undo, things like that. Obviously you can you know pinch and zoom, I can rotate my canvas as well. Um, I have a pencil tool, so if you don't want to use the pen tool, you want like a more traditional drawing experience, that's here. So a lot of the stuff you'd expect in any app, like texts and shapes, erasers, that is all here. So in the upper left, we have all our settings. So if I select an object, it's gonna give me things like delete and copy and paste and, and that sort of thing. I'm gonna talk about the settings in a little bit when I talk about some of the new things coming the app, to the app. Where I spend most of my time is over here on the right-hand side. We have our layers, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, as I go through here, I can select various things from here or I can select them over here and, and see them in my layers panel and I tend to bounce between layers and this style tab over here. And what that lets me do is when I have an object selected, I can change the fill color, the corner radius, the blend modes, also the strokes. So all the, the things that you associate with each shape can be edited over here in the styles. There are some other tabs as well. For example, there is the arrange tab. So if I have something selected, this allows you to, to nudge it over or you can choose exact coordinates where you want something to go. You know, the, we have some flip options. We also have our layer order. So if I wanna move an object further back or further in front of something else in the layer order, we can do that. Also our alignment tools. So if we have multiple objects selected, we could do some alignments there. Then on our other tab, we have our paths. So for example, this mask here, whoops, I grabbed the wrong thing. This is a mask. Um, and so I can actually come in here and, and unmask that if I want to. Let me undo that. I also can take multiple objects and merge them together using the paths or I can punch a hole in something. The, just the normal stuff that you would expect to find in any vector app like this. Now this is a design and illustration tool and most of the stuff we've seen up to this point is really illustration focused because I'm illustration focused. But if you're doing layouts, if you're doing interface design, there's this tab over here that lets you pull in symbols. And, and it's not just symbols actually, like we can pull in symbols, that's what I have over here, but there's also templates. So there's like phone templates, there's website tablets, the templates, there's like the watch OS templates. So I can bring in like some interface things. I didn't scale that properly but you could actually use this as a layout tool. Um, or you could go to like Unsplash and search free images. Same thing with Iconator, or you can bring in your own photos. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in one of my own photos here. I touched on it at the beginning of the video and I also wanna apologize ahead of time. I spend a lot of time photographing my hands because I don't know how to draw hands and I always need a photo reference. So basically my camera roll is just a bunch of photos of me and my hands. So those are the basics, but I wanna kinda of touch on some of the things 
that Adobe Illustrator doesn't yet have on the iPad that this app does. I, I opened this video while playing with auto tracing, which I think is interesting and is probably, from what I see in the comments, the number one feature that people really want in an iPad vector app that they just can't find. And this has it. And so uh, I think I used my avatar at first. That only had a handful of colors. So, so it traced pretty well. This is a photo, so you can go in and set different parameters and things like that. Um, and you're gonna get different effects based on how you go about doing those settings. So I could actually increase the minimum path size, which is gonna make bigger shapes. Uh, maximum number of paths. This is probably gonna take longer. There we go. Um, and as you see, as I, I turn those up, it actually got more abstract on me. But you get the idea. It's, it's finally nice to have something like this in a vector tool, especially if you're a designer and the client gives you like a bitmap logo and you need to change it to vectors. I think that's where this tool really shines. I'm gonna check out the uh, export settings here and we have everything you'd expect. What's kind of nice is you could just save directly here to your files. So it's like one less step to actually get there and you can export as JPEG, PNG, SVG, PDF, AI file. Also time-lapse, this is something that we see in Procreate. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen that in a vector app. So that's kind of cool. Let me go over here to preferences and document just lets you come in here and play with your document a little bit. This also uses some of the uh, iOS feature so I can like hand write in my document name. I don't have to pull up the keyboard. So some of those nice features that you'd expect on the Mac and here on the iPad are, are native to the app. Uh, Canvas, I'm gonna talk about some of those in a minute. Uh, we have our light mode and our dark mode. Um, some of our other options, like we can make the icons bigger. So if you have a smaller iPad and you just wanna see everything, make it easier to touch, you could do that. Also your input methods. I don't believe Illustrator has the ability to use anything but the Apple Pencil, but if you're using a Wacom stylus or an Adenit stylus or anything like that, all of that is going to work here in this app. Also, as a side note, if you are a designer and you've been using Sketch or Figma, you can now import those files into this app. Uh, those aren't necessarily apps that work particularly well on the iPad, but if you want to work on those files, you can do that here. I'm also using the new version 4.0 of Vectornator here, and they've added some uh, new features that just kind of streamline how the app works and how you work within it, which is something that they've been trying to shoot for in the start is being a vector app that's very user friendly. And if you've ever tried to jump into vector art and you're just not familiar with it and some of the stuff out there just seems overwhelming, you know what I'm talking about. So what they're trying to do here is really simplify it so it's easy to jump into and just use. So one of the things that really helps with that is this new quick actions bar down here. And what you see here, you have all of these icons and if you tap on any one of them, it gives you a series of options. So this allows you to change the layer order. So I have this selected and I could move it up or down in that layer order. I can also come in here and adjust the opacity down or pull it up. What else do we have? We can do alignments from here. We can change the stroke width. So I can come in here and make it really big. I don't remember what I had it at. Let's go down to like 10. That looks about right. And depending on the object or number of objects that you select, you're going to get different options as well. So for example, if I have two things selected like I do here, I have the opportunity to group or ungroup it. So it's context sensitive. Another addition that we see here in this version is in the settings. If I go ahead and tap on that gear icon, if you've used this before, this is gonna look a little bit different. What they've done is they've pulled some of the most popular settings, the things that people are toggling on and off the most, to the front of the interface. So for example, we have show touches, the CMYK preview, isolate active layer, outline mode, canvas rotation. For example, when I'm free drawing, I like to be able to come in here and uh, rotate the canvas. But maybe when I'm doing other things, I don't want that rotation to be on. Well, there we go. Now we can toggle these things on and off 
pretty easily. There's also the Mac OS app, which I haven't really shown too much in this video. I've been focusing on the iPad, but jumping between the two is extremely easy because it's pretty much the same interface. If you've used this before, you probably immediately notice that they've changed up the interface a little bit. They're using a lot of the default interface elements you find in the new Mac OS Big Sur. Things like the frosted glass design of the panels, stuff like that. Also, this runs natively on the new M1 Max. This isn't a new feature. This is something they rolled out late last year, but it's good to know that it's not running an emulation on your computer. Welcome back. I have emojis now. These are now natively supported within the app. All you have to do is jump into the type tool and, and you could use it like any other application on iPad OS. And if you like icons, they have added a boatload of new icons. Basically the entire SF icon pack that comes native on the Mac is now available to use in this app as well. This is the first time I've really done a deep dive into this app. I've used it a little bit here and there before, but this is the first chance I've had to really jump in and use all of the features. And my general impression here, and the thing that really stuck out to me is how much easier this is to use than Affinity Designer, how much easier it is to learn and use than Adobe Illustrator. So if you've tried vector art in the past and thought this just isn't for me because it seems maybe too convoluted or it's just more confusing, it's not quite as intuitive, it's just natural drawing, but you've always wanted to try it anyway, I think this is a great place to start. There's a link down below in the description for Vectornator and they're giving away a free MacBook Pro. So make sure you go down below and check out the details for that as well. That's all I have for today. What are your thoughts on Vectornator? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Bye.